This episode of StoryWorthy is sponsored by Story02 Software from Jungle. You guys, Story02 is fantastic. It's a way to outline and define your story. So whether you're writing fiction or nonfiction, an essay, a novel, a screenplay, or even a one-person show, Story02 Software will help you get your story out there with a beginning and a middle and an end. Now, there are customizable story paradigms, character image packs, and the ability to import and export final draft. You heard me. So head on over to junglesoftware.com and check out Story02 and enter the coupon code STORYWORTHY, that's all one word, to receive 10% off. Story02 by Jungle Software. There is nothing out there like it to tell your story. Hey everybody, David Nuzzy Nussbaum. I'm using finger quotes around the word Nuzzy because Nuzzy is my nickname. And you're listening to Storyworthy. Welcome to the Story Worthy Podcast. Here are your hosts, Christine Blackburn and Hannah Finney. Welcome to Story Worthy. My name is Christine Blackburn and I'm here with Hannah Spinney and we're coming to you from the Milwaukee County Courthouse. I'm, I'm building on the National Registry of Historic Places. The reason is... This is where the Milwaukee County Jail is. So the courthouse is attached to the jail? Exactly. I believe the jail is inside the courthouse. That's yes. the way it is in Pittsburgh as well. There's actually, um, it's the building next door. Right. It's adjacent. But it's is also it? one of those landmarks. Why yes, are it jails is. always landmarks? Well, not the jail, but the county, yeah, county court. It's funny because the county courthouse or a federal courthouse is usually always like, the most important, like especially in a smaller city, like really small, it's the most important building in the city. Mm-hmm. But no one ever has a good time there. Have you ever had <laughs> to go to a county? Like I had to go to have Superior. I? Yeah, exactly. But you go to like Superior Court in Los Angeles and you're like, I'm not going to have any fun here. Yeah. This is, I have to it's like pay a the, ticket. It's like I have going to, to register the DW something. Or the, D, the DUI. DWP. It's like going to the, <laughs> the DUI. No, it's like going mm. to the Department of... The, the motor vehicles, motor vehicles DM, yeah. DM, yeah, DMV, right? But but that's the BK, the win- the like CPK. you've never gone to the Department of Motor Vehicles and said, "Wow, what a stunning building!" Because it's always a terrible building, right? But a courthouse is majestic. Majestic. It's in marble. Stone. This particular one was built uh, as part of the WPA in 1931. The doors are very heavy. It's like very heavy. It seems very important. Yeah. All and then right. you're like, "This is great." Oh wait, I'm gonna have to get fucked by the system. Oh well, at least <laughs> it's in a nice course, building. Well, Unless, of course, you committed a crime and then you need to go to jail right, and then but perhaps if, even be transferred to prison. Right, exactly. Wow, this is it's heavy. And here's why heavy. we're coming from the Milwaukee jail tonight, because yes. our guest, David Nuzzy Nuzbaum, is on the show tonight, and he brings forth the topic jail. And that says to me, criminal. Criminal, that's right. Or in Milwaukee, he would probably be uh, uh, locked up just for using the nickname Nuzzy. <laughs> they just, we don't care for that kind of behavior. You know what's funny, though, is like, I don't know David Nuzzy Nuzbaum well, but automatically I just want to call him Nuzzy. Like, he doesn't seem like a David. You just want to hold his head and go, Nuzzy, Nuzzy, go, Nuzzy, 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 and rub Nuzzy. his head. Here's what I know about this man. He recently had a very small child. A and when I say small, child. I mean a six-pounder. Ah, so Didn't his, you beat that? Wasn't Alabama four father. pounds? He's a new father. He's a new father, and the fact of the matter is, you come out to record a podcast, and your kid's only six weeks old. You want to get out of the house? Yeah, you're. Yeah, you're <laughs> like, honey, I'd love to. I signed a contract. I will owe them thousands this of dollars if I don't is show up. This podcast paying me a lot of money. Without this podcast, we cannot raise this <laughs> child and send no, her to college. No, but listen, I truly appreciate that he came out. And I remember when I had my first child, um, my only child. <laughs> Well, my first of seven, you know. First of, yeah. No, my, for my child that you are, I mean, especially as a mom, I was in a, well, you knew me then, honest, yes. but I was in a cloud, a fog. I didn't know what no, was all, happening for about three months. They're all the same, yeah. They're all I like. I mean, it's just. Well, the thing that amazed me, because you and, and uh, our other friends had babies at around the same time, the fact that you have to change the diaper early on every 20 minutes yeah. was like, why are we even putting a diaper on the a child? A lot of times why? I didn't put a diaper on. I just let her shit on the couch. Well, why don't we just put her in a, you know, suspend her over a trough of some kind at the stadium, <laughs> like when you pee Could into you remind a diaper. me never to let you watch my child again? No, no, no. She poops on her own now. It's fine. She does. And I said that to Nuzzy just a little bit ago, how yeah. when you have a child, you do deal with their poop 
till they're about six, and then you're out. No more yeah. poop. Right. You have a dog. How long are you in for? Well, 12 a long years, time. 15 years, but the life of the dog. Right. But I'd on the other hand, you could never accidentally leave your daughter's poop on somebody else's lawn. With a You'd dog, be surprised. you might wander by. Exactly. Did well, you, anyway, one of our one of our uh, other children who is not your child, who I recall you giving him a bath, who's a very small child, Dino and Hunter. you picked him up, and he just shit just started to come out of him. Absolutely, you're holding him up, and it's just landing on your skirt. And, and when landing. you right, it was, so it was in the bath, it was on my skirt, it was in my hair, and when that's happening, there's nothing you can do about it. It's not yeah. like you can say, "Well, fuck this shit," and throw the kid aside, and somebody will come in and clean this up. Yeah. No, no, no. You're the only one who's going to take care of the matter. Right. That's that's how you know you're a parent. Nobody else is going to do it. Yes, right. Oh God. Oh, help me. Uh, uh, okay, but listen, maybe this isn't uh, the worst thing that's happened to him because he's been in jail. So yeah. <laughs> I think perhaps he's seen uh, darker days. I don't know. I'm excited about this. Here's this what I want to say about jail. I've only been to one jail. <laughs> okay. No, I've been to two jails. Once I was put in jail. Oh dear. That was in Heidelberg, Germany. Oh, like that's I told right. this story once before on the show. I'm going to say it very quickly. But it's German not jails, that big of a that, deal. That, that's is a lot right. of good stories. The German like jail I was in was in the middle of a traffic circle. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and it had like a 360 view. So it wasn't that bad of a jail, but it was because I didn't pay, you know, have they do the honor system on the public transportation in oh, Europe? Oh, right. Yeah, well, I didn't pay that fare. And, and you so jumped off. We, no, I didn't jump off. I got, we got me and my friend Gidget. That's right. Oh, you did? Oh, Gidget they were looking for busted. tickets. Okay. They were looking for tickets. We didn't have the tickets. Gidget we goes jail. to jail, That's my right. favorite porno but in the world. But it wasn't that dramatic. We were there for about seven hours and actually ended up laughing a lot and then finally, they drove us to the um, bus station, or excuse me, the train station in Heidelberg. Literally, these two cops, we took pictures in the back of the squad car. They drove us to the train station. They waited for us to get on the train and waited for the train to pull away to say, get the fuck out of Heidelberg. Heidelberg. Go, go, be gone with you. And we left. But the <laughs> other, the other um, time I went to jail was with my friend Billy Robinson, who was a comedian out of Pittsburgh. And he was a, a jail guard yeah. at the Weirton, West Virginia jail. West and Virginia I, jail. That I does not that sound good. I thought that was so fascinating. And a lot of his you know, routine was about being this jail guard. And so I asked him if I could go visit him at jail, yeah. you know, see, see how it all works. And I took Eaton Park Smiley Cookies, which turns out they wouldn't give to the prisoners. Okay. Because they had files in them. Well, I was trying to just, like, bring a little sunshine into the jail. Sure. You know? Billy says you can't do that. Yeah. These people are being punished. Yeah. So they didn't take my cookies. <laughs> I think the, the guards just wanted to eat the cookies. I think that's what yeah, it Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Have you ever been to jail, Hannes? I have not been to jail. No, I have not been to jail. I am much too anal retentive. I am much too afraid of... Anal rape? Acting... No, no, that sounds awesome. <laughs> no, um, I'm no, I'm afraid of uh, acting out. So I, I'm a very restrained person, and yeah. therefore I don't tend to do things that will get me uh, risk thrown taking. In You're jail. not a big risk taker. I'm not a big risk taker. Yeah, but I think if you to go to jail to have your freedom taken away would probably be the worst thing. It's not a good. Yeah, yeah, I don't think I would enjoy that. I do not enjoy other people imposing their will on me. I know that you do not. So, and in any way, shape, or form. So if, this is why, like, I, this, is, this will sound really stupid. Obviously, everybody hates criminals. But I really, like, if I hear somebody, yeah, it was a home invasion, it was this. And it's like, I really want those people to be punished much more severely than they are. It's like, who are you to, like, rob someone to come in to hold them hostage in their home to impose your will on them because mm -hmm. you're so weak on the well, inside. Well, that's the criminal part. That's the criminal right. part. Right. But then, of course, as you know, and the liberal in me says, you know, it depends on where they are coming from and Fuck where their them. state no, of it mind. Doesn't. No, it doesn't. Well, no, but it doesn't. It doesn't because of the fact, okay, I remember uh, a friend of mine got a gun pulled on him in Chicago. And then the, this cop comes and talks to him afterwards and goes, listen, I know this kid. He's a good kid. He, the gun wasn't loaded. You know, he wasn't, but it's like, I the idea that the gun wasn't loaded, it's like, fuck you. 
You didn't tell me the gun wasn't loaded. You right. know why? Because it wouldn't have scared me if the gun wasn't loaded. So for you to hold a gun on me that you can't shoot me with, you're still implying that you will shoot me. Mm-hmm. Ergo, you're doing exactly the same thing. Right. And it doesn't, you know, I come from a fucked up family and I never held a gun on anybody. Well, and there's you so know, many now people. we're getting into like philosophy. Philosophy, I sake. know it's exciting because that's podcast gold. <laughs> you know what people like to hear? <laughs> Philo- criminal philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like people are, you know, so – people are such assholes. I think this is what I'm really trying that to get That we can to. agree on. Now we're getting somewhere. People are assholes. And it's like there's people who, you know, you say, well, they come from a bad neighborhood and there's gangs and so forth. The vast majority of people who live in the worst parts of Los Angeles have never committed a crime. People who grew up in the exact same circumstance – of dysfunctional families, drug abuse, being literally under the gun of gangs, the vast majority of those people never do anything wrong. Mm-hmm. So I don't feel like it's a good excuse. It's like, I grew up in a bad neighborhood. You were the know, reason it was I mean, a bad this is neighborhood. turning into like an Oprah session for Christ's I know, sakes. I know. I have a feeling he maybe he just got thrown into like an amusement park jail. I'm hoping maybe it was just that it was either DUI. something really silly or something horrible. Well, this is exciting, and I just hope he didn't kill anybody. Hey, he comes from a bad neighborhood. I'm not going to judge. What are you going to look at him? <laughs> he's from Minnesota, I assume, because he's wearing a Twins hat. He's from New it's Jersey, a, man. A, oh, no, this is a Jersey guy. And he's wearing a Twins hat. This makes no sense. He's oh, a, come on hey, He's a maniac. All right, we'll have you to guys, figure that out later. David Nuzzi Nuzbaum is going to be up in two seconds to you know, tell his story. You know, only real criminals have, you know, there's Johnny Two Pants. Nuzzy Nuzbaum, they, you got to have your nickname. You're obviously a mobster. <laughs> but before we bring our storyteller on, I did want to mention that if you'd like to support Storyworthy, that would be terrific. Here's what you can do. Head on over to our website, storyworthypodcast.com. And then what, Hannes? Well, number one, we'd like you to click on the uh, Patreon link. You'll see an amusing little video of us. You don't have to watch the this. video. You, you don't have to. I think you will find it amusing. But if you don't, you can always yell at us and give us the finger while it's on. That we won't know. At the end of the day, we want you to donate. That's what yes, we want you to exactly. do. exactly. If you can help us with $5 a month, $3 a month, whatever you can it's help us ongoing with. ongoing support. That's what ongoing it's called, support. Hannes. This thing, this thing we call show, this thing we call <laughs> podcast, this thing we call Storyworthy, it needs money to survive. You need money to survive. We need money to survive. We want this to keep going. We want to keep entertaining you. But it doesn't happen in a vacuum, people. There you go. Money that was a good pitch, needs, Honest. Yes. All right, you guys. You can also follow us on Twitter, at Storyworthy. Okay, folks, wherever you are, stay tuned, because David Nuzzy Nuzbaum is on his way here. Next time on Storyworthy, we have comedian Kira Soltanovich. And I'll be talking about my photo booth from The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. Yeah, it's next time on Storyworthy. You know, it's, it's fun. Hey, this is Matt Oswald, and you're listening to Storyworthy. And we're back. I have to talk quietly because, oddly enough, what we were doing was illegal, and we are now in the Milwaukee County Jail. <laughs> so it's a little... Hello, Bruno. How are you? Do you like the uh, show Orange is the New Black? I am. I have not really watched that. Oh, uh, Sherry good. loves that show, and yeah, m- I do many too. people love that show. And that's more I of a prison thing, though. It's prison. It's not jail. Yeah, I, I, I prison. I guess is I. You know, a I don't prison know. Prison would probably be more tolerable because you would decide, like, okay, these are going to be my homies, <laughs> and you know, that's the yes, guy. Yes, that's gonna... <laughs> what I would say going into prison. <laughs> and she'll be Hello, my girlfriend. Hello, my homies. And, and uh, you know, I think you'd actually get used to it. You know, maybe fo- f- you know, form a small group of friends. You would have a schedule. You wouldn't have a small group of friends. Food you would have free. a group of protectors. The people that you allow to sexually assault you to protect you from the other larger I people. I wouldn't be worried about like my Twitter numbers. You know what I mean? No, that's true. That's you probably would be, actually. You like to worry about things. Hey, listen, this guy, David Nuzzy Nuzbaum, he's really very, very funny. And he has a stellar podcast called Decently Funny with Is it Nuzzy stellar? and the guy. It's so flipping good. I listen to about. Well, I do listen to about 15 or 20 shows, but this is in the queue always, week yeah, after week. Yeah. He has a lot of fantastic guests. He's had Henry Winkler, Eric Stone Street, who I loved. Uh, Jason oh, yeah. Ritter's a regular guest on the show. Awesome. And his partner is also a very funny guy. I can't remember Guy's last name, but he's very funny as well. So, uh, 
<laughs> Nuzzy. He is a writer and a comedian. And like I said, the host of the very popular show, Decently Funny, with Nuzzy and the Guy. And you can find him on Twitter at the Nuzzy. The, the Nuzzy. Nuzzy. All right, folks, wherever you are, put your hands together for Nuzzy Nuzbum. At Nuzzy was taken. It's the summer of 1993, and I'm back at my slacker stoner summer job, ride operator at Jenkinson's Amusements. Jenkinson's is an amusement park. It's got the rides, the games, the food vendors. It's right on the boardwalk on the Jersey Shore, all right? And it's the Jersey Shore, so what better job to have when you're a stoner living in New Jersey, right, than just being on the boardwalk? Uh, I get to be outside all day, get tan, look at girls in bikinis, and when I'm lucky enough to work the flitzer or the scrambler, I uh, get to try to make all of the bennies throw up. And uh, all the bennies come in uh, down the shore. I'm using finger quotes. Down the shore for the weekend. That's what they call them. And a benny is the derogatory term that us uh, year-round residents of the Jersey Shore use to describe rude, flashy, loud tourists from New Jersey and New York. They cut lines, they drive recklessly, they start fights, harass women, and uh, overall, they're just completely disrespectful. Bennies. We hated them. I th it, it could be a racist term. I don't even know. I might be racist right now. Uh, so basically, it was the entire cast of the Jersey Shore were all bennies. So now you know what a benny is. Uh, I don't know why I'm getting into the details of what a benny is, other than to vent about them right now. I know I'm supposed to be talking about jail. Totally using this as a therapy session. So I got to deal with a million snookies and situations every day during my late teen summers. Hey, you work this ride? Well, yeah, I'm wearing a Jenkinson's uniform. I work this ride. How many friggin' tickets is this ride? Uh, it says right on the sign, it's three tickets. Is my kid tall enough to get on this friggin' ride? Uh, your kid is like three weeks old, so I would say no, that's uh, probably not gonna be an option. Um, anyway, from sunup to sundown, like six, seven days a week, I'm working the boardwalk and I'm making money. You know, I'm a real busy guy these days. Uh, no time to be a stoner slacker. I was uh, going into the summer ready uh, for business. Now, I don't even remember the last time I smoked pot. Hey, I'm growing up, I'm responsible. But so one night, it's the middle of the summer, I forget the exact date, I worked all day, like 20 days in a row, I'm exhausted, it's like 2 o'clock in the morning, and I'm driving home from work, from Jenkinson's. Uh, gotta get home, gotta go to sleep, because I've got a, a big day of fucking with bennies and staring at hot girls in bikinis to get ready for. So I'm really looking forward to it. So uh, nobody's on the road, I'm really tired, maybe I'll just go a little bit faster, so I can get home a little bit sooner, so tired. Fuck. The police lights pop up and they're in my rearview mirror. I think everybody knows uh, the feeling, even if you've done nothing wrong, that when you see the lights go on, you become like mo America's most wanted, yeah. right? Uh, I got pulled over. So the cop walks up to the side of my car. You know how fast you were going? And I'm like, uh, I don't know, 35? It was a 35, right? So I'm going 35. Uh, I'm just on my way home from work. No, you were doing 52 in a 35. Okay, well, I didn't realize I was going that fast. Uh, license and registration, please. Um, my hands are shaking. I'm super nervous. I don't want a ticket. I can't afford a ticket. Uh, cops make me generally nervous just for, I'm, I'm a nervous person, so a cop is going to make me even extra nervous. Um, and, and also, maybe it's the fact that they always walk up to your car with their hand on their gun. Like I'm, like I'm some kind of, like I'm in Ferguson, Missouri or something? Uh, that makes me nervous. Uh, so I managed to get my license out of my wallet. I hand it to him. Uh, and then I reach in my center console for my registration and insurance. I open the console. Shit. I've got my one hitter, my little pot distributor uh, thingy. Uh, it's like a little wooden box. And for those of you who don't know, the, a one hitter is like the size of, it's like a, a dugout. Thank you. But it, the one hitter is the, is the actual cigarette thing that you use to push the pot from the dugout into the thing. And uh, a friend of mine actually made it at a, in wood shop and gave it to me. That's what we did in high school. We did wood shop. Uh, so uh, I, so I'm, 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 I totally forgot that it was in there. Uh, I hadn't smoked any pot in months. You know, I mean, I was a, wor I was a hard worker. Um, you know, and, oh, okay, so I'm, starting, so I'm starting to shake. My hands are getting, uh, starting to cover up all the papers, you know, the paperwork, because I, I wanted to, uh, the, uh, the cop was looking over my shoulder, he could see what I'm doing, and I'm rustling now, I'm pushing things over this little pot thing, with dugout one hitter, um, 
I say to the cop, uh, I'm, you know what? I'm so sorry. I can't seem to find my license, my registration. And, uh, are you going to give me a ticket or something? And, you know, I'm thinking in my head, um, please just give me a ticket. Please just give me a ticket. Please just give me a ticket. You know, I'm just thinking, I hope he just says, uh, you know what? All right, I'm going to give you a ticket. I'm gonna go right up the ticket. Uh, he says, no, that's okay. Don't worry about it. Just do me a favor and turn off your engine and get out of the car. And so now I'm really nervous because I'm busted. Uh, so I, uh, I turn, so I go as fast as I can. No, I'm kidding. I get out of the car. I get out of the car. And, uh, uh, he asked me to stand at the trunk of my car and uh, another cop shows up and he's keeping me busy while this other cop is now going through my entire car and he finds this dugout and this one hitter with only residue. I, I honestly, I didn't even know it was in the car. It was just sitting in there for months. I had really kind of turned over a new leaf. I, I was this kind of stoner slacker and then I was working every day and I literally just forgot that it was there. Um, so the cop takes it out with a big smile on his face. He's pretty happy about himself because he just hit his quota for the night. <laughs> little Jewish kid from New Jersey is now in handcuffs, which they put on a little bit too tight. Now, I had gotten into trouble before. Um, I've been arrested. Uh, I know, uh, that's, that's a lot. I, I was put in Jamesway jail. Jamesway was sort of like a really shitty target uh, in New Jersey because I used to, I switched... My co-host Guy Opachinsky, Guy and I, we would switch uh, price tags because we didn't have any money. So we would switch price tags. So we wouldn't exactly steal things, but we would just make them the price that we can afford to buy them. Yeah. So, uh, so I've done stuff like that. You know, I got caught egging houses on on mischief night and stuff. But so now I'm. Uh, am I going? Should I, should I keep this going? All right. So they uh, they they leave my car on the side of the road and they put me in the back of the car. And they drive me uh, three or four miles to Bricktown, New Jersey jail, Bricktown jail. And they don't play games in New Jersey, even if you've got nothing. It's just a little bit of paraphernalia with, uh, with residue in it. Uh, you're busted. You're like, you might as well be the uh, world's worst criminal, O.J. Simpson, whatever. They, um, so they, they fingerprint me, and I'm, and I'm already like, uh, uh, I already hate the fact that I'm going to jail, but now they're going to, you know, now i got to get fingerprinted. Um, and then they do the mug shot. Now, I was having a great hair day. <laughs> I happened to be having a great hair. I had like this surfer kind of thing, you know, and like from the sun all day and I had some lemon juice in it. So like it was like a whole like I'm like, OK, cool. So I just put a mental note. And by the way, if there's any Bricktown police officers out there right now, uh, it was the summer of 1993. David Nussbaum, please try to I would love a copy of my uh, of my mug shots, put them on a t-shirt, put them on a, on a, on a mug or something. I sell them to decently, um, what do I call it? Decently arrested or decently, uh, uh, delinquent. Okay. Um, my podcast is decently funny. So that's where that comes from. Uh, so they finally put me in a holding cell and I'm the only one in there and it's just a, uh, a cot and a toilet and I have to use the bathroom cause I'm nervous. And when I'm nervous, I have to use the bathroom. I've gone to the bathroom three times since I'm sitting here in this podcast already. And uh, I'm thinking to myself, uh, you're going to have to take a shit pretty soon. And, but th and it's, all, it's all wide open. It's just bars and everything. So, um, so I'm pacing. I'm walking. I'm, you know, I'm just trying to, I'm like, how, when am I going to get out of here? So I finally, okay, so I take a shit. Uh, I take a shit in jail. And so notch that off the, uh, the bucket list. <laughs> Took a shit in jail. Uh, and uh, so, I'm ta so now I lay down on the cot. And, I, and for whatever reason, I don't know how I was able to, I go to sleep. Um, and now I wake up at six o'clock in the morning and there's two other guys in my holding cell with me. And I, I got really nervous because I've, I've seen cops, you know, I've seen all these shows on the ID channel. But, um, but as, my, as, as, you know, as the fogginess goes away, I see they're both smaller than me. And I'm like, great, who am I going to make my bitch? Because I'm the biggest guy in jail. Uh, so... I'm making the Puerto Rican guy my bitch. No, I'm kidding. So uh, it was at that time the, the cop comes over and he is uh, going to release me on my own recognizance. And uh, all I have to do is sign some paperwork. It's like 7 or 8 o'clock in the morning. Um, and uh, so I sign out and I ask, how am I going to get back to my car? What am I going to do? And uh, he tells me I'm going to hoof it, hoofing it back. And I was a cigarette smoker at the time. I was jonesing for a cigarette. I hadn't had a cigarette in like, a, in like 10 hours. And... Uh, so as I'm walking back to my car, I'm just looking like a delinquent. I'm looking on the, in the gutter for any like cigarette butt that I can, you know, because they took my cigarettes. I see a cigarette uh, pack and I pick it up and it's heavy. 
Success! <laughs> Cigarettes. I open it up. It's filled with joints. <laughs> Big fat joints. And I'm looking, I look to my left, I look to my right, I, I, I'm like, I'm 100% I'm positive I'm either on the Jamie Kennedy experiment <laughs> or I'm being set up or this is just not right. I threw them back down. It was the end of my pot smoking days. I wasn't going to go back to jail ever again. And I made it back to the car just in time for me to go back to work in the morning. And that is, uh, that is, my, that is my, uh, my jail story. That is uh, my night in jail. So you didn't have like the one phone call. You didn't. Nobody asked you if you wanted that. I hear, I hear that that's a myth, by the way, and per, per, perpetuated by television. It's like you don't really get a phone call. You got a phone call. I I, I don't remember if I had gotten. I didn't use a phone call. The only person I could have called at the time was my mom. Well, I was living course. at home. I was like eighteen or nineteen years old. But w did I really want to call my mom? Well, I'm know, in but jail. Like, how did you know you were going to get out of jail? I mean, at that point, didn't you think this this could be a big, big problem? I just put myself in a different place and I went just, to sleep. You took I, a shit. And I went took to a sleep. shit. Went to sleep. And I and I Sounds and like I. Are you Saturday a bear? Night to me. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I've always wondered. Why is it called taking a shit? Yes, you're, you're not leave, taking you're up a shit, a shit and taking it no, with you. No, you're not. You're you're giving a shit. You're dropping you're the leaving kids a shit. off at the yeah. pool. It never made any sense. Why are you taking? I it? don't know. Nazi, okay. was there a toilet seat on the toilet? There was no top lid, but there was a, a sit down toilet seat. A ring. Uh, there was a there ring. was the top ring that uh, that uh, that you would sit down on. I appreciate and that. And then you could then um, open that. Yes. And then, then, and there was toilet paper. Then you could. There was toilet paper. There, it and, was and not, everybody. They could look in and watch you. They were watching. Although yes, you're could, like, could watch. Would they really want to watch? How many guys have they seen take a shit? I don't. I don't remember them watching. I don't even think anybody was in eyesight. But just the idea. That that I was t now leaving a shit right. or giving a shit right. uh, in an open space and uh, I've got really weird wiping habits. I've never taken a shit in an open room. I mean, at all. Do you know what I mean? So I think it's unusual for anybody, let yeah. alone to think that other people are watching yes. you. It was there a, a and I'm sink? thinking, is there a camera? Yeah. Oh, I'm uh, sure like, there am was. I being, am I being, am I being video? Is there a videotape <laughs> of me flo <laughs> floating around of me? I would have been taking like, a shit in I'd a like jail to see that. like Oh, oh, God. Decently oh, crapping. Yes. Yes. David like, Nesmith's bomb. Did I eat so much chili? Decently flatulent. Was there a sink in like a mirror? Was that in the... A I don't recall. They don't have mirrors in jail, I do don't know because you can a... smash the mirror and yeah. then you can use the... the use it you as, can, as a shift. Shift. Like one of yeah. those, like if you go to a bad <laughs> park where they have like... They, it's, it, they have they have mm -hmm. like you know all the toilets and sinks are all like one piece of metal mm -hmm. yeah and the, and the mirror quote unquote is a yeah. is a polished piece of metal yeah it's like a wall, fun house where you can kind of yeah it doesn't so really you always do much. look like your pants and there's are never untucked. soap in there yeah. and that's the, see, the thing with the, the advantage there Hannes is that's sort of a public restroom they just take a hose at the end of the day they just hose that down. If you're that, lucky, I think that's a good thing. Yeah, exactly. So luckily, you had you 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 left your shit while no one was there. So where on the Jersey Shore are we talking about? Okay, so it's it's down the shore. Down the shore. All sure. the Bennies know exactly what I'm talking we, about. Okay, was it Ocean City? It's called um, Point Pleasant, New Jersey. Uh, Point Pleasant. Right, Point Pleasant. Uh, years later, they made a television show about Point Pleasant. Yeah, uh, it that didn't work. Familiar. What it was didn't it work. called? It was called Point, Point Pleasant. Pleasant. Yeah, yeah, it was called but, that. But for whatever reason, the TV show didn't work because it was about the daughter of Satan. That sounds it's, like it's a real. It's not really. Great, yeah, yeah, so she just shows up on the shore of Point Pleasant, and she's the son, she's the daughter. And of Satan. so because I worked down the shore, <laughs> the, I don't know. It was I, on Fox. I worked down the shore when I was seventeen what? and eighteen as well. Yeah, and I worked at Core Brothers Ice Cream. Do you remember ah, that place? Sure. The custard from yeah. the custard. Yeah. Wait, where did you work? I was in Ocean City, okay. New Jersey, oh, down the shore. Look at that. Working across from the hey. music pier. I used to love. I used to try to pick up on all the uh, all sure. the ice cream uh, because we had cute uh, little girls. white ice yeah. cream dresses. Yes. Yeah. And they were really cute. And then we had a blue and white apron that mm -hmm. we got to wear on top. The one uh, at Seaside Heights <laughs> uh, just burned uh, to the ground the again. The Core Brothers? Yeah, oh, that's uh, too the bad. whole thing just, you know, Seaside's all, it's all burned to yeah. pieces. For Is me. it really? Uh, we, we've got yeah. way too no. way no, I didn't know that. Why are you saying that? Well, okay, Seaside. well, there was uh, uh, Seaside Heights, which is like one of the biggest towns on the Jersey Shore. Yeah. Uh, so there was the... Um, uh, what was the name of that? Uh, Hurricane, Sandy. Hurricane uh, Sandy. Sandy. So Sandy destroys the thing, right? And I so, remember the boardwalk. Yeah. I mean, the uh, pier that was so sad. completely destroyed. Oh, yeah, and then God, the and so then the uh, roller coaster sitting in the yeah, ocean. You could see it. Oh. And so then 
Um, uh, so then Sandy uh, goes away, and then they put millions and millions and millions of dollars back into building the boardwalk, and then there's a fire on the boardwalk. Like, they literally hammer in the last nail, and they're like, okay, we're open for business. And then the whole boardwalk catches on That's fire. That's incredibly sad. Yeah. What kind of fire was that? It was a Arson hot fire. A electrical, hot fire. electrical? It, I think it was an electrical fire, and I think it started at the ice cream uh, Oh, no, don't joint. go putting this on Danny Core. I'm, po- I'm pointing it on Danny Core. Danny, Danny Core, you Kaur know. Danny was my boss. He was so handsome. I I was Somebody. 18. I was 17, and he was like 28, and I was like, "Oh man, yeah. I would climb that ice cream tree." You know what yeah. I'm saying? Well, somebody needs <laughs> to. Thank go- you, Scott Christopher. Ice cream hey, tree. Scott's First paying attention, I ever ladies and got gentlemen. The sound guy to listen, ladies and gentlemen, right the, here. Uh, uh, yeah, we've gotten a lot of Jersey Shore information that I never expected to have because now, I've never been to the Jersey Shore, but so many of our guests and Christine. End up talking about the Jersey Shore. Well, because it's classic if you live anywhere on yeah, the East if you're Coast. Anywhere on the East even, Coast. I mean, I always said, I, I used to say I'm from the East Coast. Then Hannes corrected me and said, I'm not from the East Coast. She's I'm from the Pittsburgh. Midwest. That's because not that's the East Pittsburgh. Coast. But no. still, the fact it's is. Pennsylvania. That Pennsylvania. But see, Pennsylvania, Ohio, to the, me, yeah. they are still going to vacation on the Jersey Shore because the ocean is closer, isn't it? Uh, uh, maybe. Uh, you know, Pittsburgh is different than Philadelphia. I mean, I True. guess it's all, you're all in the same state, but it's you are kind of. Well, Pittsburgh is such a wide, long yeah. state. I remember right. riding a train Pennsylvania. across Pennsylvania. Sure. What did I say? Yeah. Pennsylvania, it took like eight hours just to cross the state on a train. It's a big state. It was gigantic. Now, we used to call the um, tourists shoebies. We okay. called them shoebies All because right. they wore shoes, and we were, of course, the locals at this point, and so we didn't wear shoes because that's how cool we were. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And But you called them bennies. Bennies, and I believe... That it's an acronym for all of the states in the surrounding state, like Bayonne, Elizabeth, New, something like oh, they're, they're all New Jersey. They're, they're towns. all like New Jer- North Jersey and and uh, New York town. So it's wow. it's like three or four New Jersey towns yeah. and then New York at the end. So it's Benny. So it was like oh, so maybe it's like Bayonne, S- Elizabeth, Newark, and New York. Interesting. And, no, and, I w- I put it with an I E S because yeah. I was going literally. We were very uh, clever people. Yeah, you are uh, clever people. South. Jersey. Yeah. I, I, what did you do at so, Jenkins Arcade? You ran the rides. I ran the rides. And so it was cool, like, if you got stuck on a baby, on a child ride. Oh, I hate that. I hated that. But then <laughs> I um, I would always say, look, they're like, okay, today you're going to be running a child ride. So I would always... Um, Curse. Bu- I, no, I, w- I would say, oh, well, put me on the ball pit. Because so then, because then when nobody's looking, you just splash some water in there and say a baby peed in there, and then you got to shut the ride down for an hour. Oh, okay. <laughs> or say, by the way, put me on the ball yeah. pit is something else you learn in prison. That's to stay that's long true. Enough. I you heard that in jail. And then in uh, and then if I got put on an adult ride, yeah. I would always ask for the the flitzer or the scramble, so anything where I could make these bennies throw up because then yeah. you got to splash water on it, and then you could shut it down for an hour. Like the zipper. The zipper. Yeah. And when the, in that case, you're splashing water and you're saying that they vomited yes. or they pee. Yes, that's right. Well, I they vomit. Mm-hmm. And then I have to obviously uh, hose the vomit off of the ride. Yeah. And then you have to shut it down for an hour. Are you saying flitzer or flipper? Uh, I said the flitzer. And what does that mean, a flitzer? Yeah, you know. What does you, the ride do? The, the ride goes around in circles and then the mini, uh, the cars that, that you're, you're in, in, those go also around uh-huh, in circles. Uh-huh. circles. Oh. Kind of like the teacup ride at Disneyland. But, but no, but no, like, but this uh, is like a, like a, like a, like a, like a, like a, yeah, like a Ferris So you're in deadly danger because yeah. yeah. it's New zipper. Jersey. It's like, it in a, like so maybe that's the zipper. Yeah. We called the it the, we called it the flitzer. And did you ever have to do like the, um, the hot, um, what's the ride where the, the big slide, you know, where they sit on a mat or you sit on a bag and you fly down. My first ever, uh, season. At Jenkinson's, they had that, uh-huh. and then I think somebody just fell off the side or something and died, <laughs> and so they I, they replaced it with the flitzer. <laughs> They actually that the the <laughs> slide was too much of a risk, so they replaced it with the thing that all the Benny saw. Because up at on. least they were in a cage. They were in a cage. Yeah. By the way, let's not talk about the times you pretended people throw up. Yeah. Let's talk about when they actually did throw up. Well, what was great is because they were like, "Hey, uh, make my make my friggin' pal throw up. I'll give you twenty bucks." You know, and so like then you're literally you're you're cranking it, you're cranking your arm, you're gonna you throw your arm out, just like spinning and spinning and spinning, and like the whole point was to make these assholes throw up. <laughs> <laughs> and how many summers did you do that? It was uh, four or five summers. I, I look forward to my... Now, you're a new father, and yes. I have one daughter. You uh-huh. have one daughter. Yeah. I do hope someday, when she's 17, 18, 19, 20, I look forward to the jobs that she has, and I, and I hope she can have a lot of fun. Like, I feel like I, I had a lot of fun doing silly yes. stuff, you know, right? I had a lot of fun at Jenkinson's. It was uh, uh, every summer they would, uh, for whatever reason, 
all of these Irish from Ireland, like <laughs> Ireland Irish people from, yeah. they not would New come York in. Irish, yeah. Not I'm not. Yeah, oh, you're Irish. I'm. You know. I no. They're like literally. Oh, like gr- I got a great fucking boozle. Like they're like really <laughs> Ireland. Yeah. Really yeah. Irish. They come over and then they. It's like a work for summer thing. Like they come over for oh, the summer. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And I loved it. Because it's like, okay, which one are you going to fuck? Which one? Yeah, you, like, you and fuck like, their brains and, yeah. and then they got to go back. Right. And that's right. And then they go away. Yeah. And so totally. every summer I fell in love with another Irish girl. Absolutely. Yeah. That's brilliant. Yeah. Well, an Irish girl, anyhow, the accent and the hair yeah. is like, you're going to, you know, and then you're like, I want to come. She's like, there's no Jews allowed in ah. Ireland. <laughs> we have five already. We can't have any more. Hannes, look behind you. You see the line? What? You crossed it. I didn't cross you it. You crossed the goddamn have line. Have you been to Ireland? I have. They're have killing you? Protestants. You think they're good with everybody else? <laughs> uh, let me ask you something, David Nuzzy Nuzbaum. Your mm-hmm. mo- your father was a salesperson. Yes. Your mother. He's Jew, so yes. Yeah, your mother was a stay at home mom, or uh, she owned the dance place in Jackson, New Jersey, for quite some time. That's you sweet. like a Arthur Murray kind of a thing, or uh, the, her her the, uh, yes, no, no, but a uh, a bunch of women all got together and they taught children how to dance, and then they would put on a performance oh, okay. at the end of it. So you oh, okay. think you maybe got your creative from your your mom and your and My your. Mom. And your business sense from your dad, yes. something like that. Yes. Look at that! I yeah. nailed that. I, I would say that you. is the truth. And I did that. Yeah. That was pretty good. What did your father sell? Uh, he about? sold lighting component parts, <laughs> wall sconces, and he he put me in uh, in business with him for a little while. So we would go uh, we would go to New York. He had his own showroom in New York, and his showroom was literally a room with just a bunch of fucking like glass shades. And I don't really? know why. Glass was it shades? in Manhattan? Just like, you know, like was just, yeah, in Manhattan. So yeah. he had his own like, uh, his own showroom. And that sounds beautiful, but it, I mean like chandeliers no, and stuff? No, 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 no. Just like little, like uh, if you have like a, a light on your ceiling or a light on the wall, just something to stick over it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you would see them in hotels or you would see them in restaurants yeah, yeah, yeah. and just, th- and so he would uh, sell them by the piece to lots of, to uh, other retailers. Yeah. And that is, it was, uh, that was his, I love it he did that for like sell, 40 years. Wow, like very something? specific things, yeah. like yeah. propane and propane yeah. accessories. But it's like really like, you know, do, oh, what do you sell? You sell chairs? No, no, no. I only sell chair legs. That's right. Or yeah. I only yeah. sell cushions. My dad it's didn't like, sell what? lamps. He yeah. sold just the, the glass. Thing that yeah. goes yeah. on the, the light. And then, just such a funny yeah. idea to me. Yeah. And then, uh, so, uh, but it was it was cool because then he sure. would, but as a travel, he would be a traveling salesman sometimes. He had a showroom in New York, but then he would go to Dallas or he would go to LA or he would even go to like Italy or France and he would, t- but to be a traveling salesman, giant giant boxes of glass wow. were schlepping all over. He was wow. literally Willie yeah. Loman. Yeah. And where yes. are your folks now? They're still in New Jersey? They're in New Jersey. They're in uh, they're in a retirement community. They're uh-huh. both in Wonderful. their 70s. I always think I would like to go to a retirement I community. Yeah. Jerry Seinfeld's old joke is like, yeah, my parents moved to Florida. They didn't want to, but it's the law. It is the. <laughs> <laughs> but don't you think that's a great thing, though, right? Because he was he was sick. He couldn't. He didn't want to mow the lawn anymore. And now they do it for you. And yeah. So that's sort but of. But also, yeah. you're with your peers. Yeah, yeah, but and he he hates that do. they hate that they're with peers. Oh. My mom goes, she goes to the uh, to the pool every morning, and so it's her and all of her like little uh, canasta, yeah. you know, mahjong girlfriends. They all with their <laughs> with their bathing caps on, and then they're just doing like little aerobics in the pool. Uh, I don't know how much of it is actually exercise, but <laughs> it gets her out of the house. Yeah, sure, yeah, the kibitzing and the, yeah, I love it. Yeah. I love it. And my dad sits in front of the TiVo and uh, you know watches uh, all the Star Trek uh, reruns and. Oh, uh, so yeah. have you really never smoked? Awesome. Awesome. Pot again? Uh, well, that part it was a story, right? Yeah. So um, I thought it m- made for a good story. Uh, uh, I did smoke some pot after that, but I n- never took it out of my uh, room. Yeah. yeah. My mom actually, when I got home, the, so the end of that story really is I got home and my mom was pissed off and I told her where I'd been. Yeah, because she she didn't know where you no, were. No, she didn't know where I was. Well, so that's I, terrifying. So I came home and I told her what happened and then she said, uh, never smoke pot in your car again. Um only smoke it in home. Well, hey, that's yeah. great. I love that. So advice. I was like, shit, you're giving me, to the, I shouldn't be allowed to smoke pot. And plus, I'm 19 years old. What am I still doing living at home anyway? No, listen, well, first that's of all, no, at least she that's was what smart happened enough to know yeah. she was yeah. telling yeah. you not to smoke pot was not going to. Yeah. That wasn't going to happen. So, but then it became like the place to smoke. All my friends would just come over and smoke pot at the <laughs> Nussbaum. Oh, that's awesome! Well, I so love made your up parents. A pot of something like <laughs> on the stove. So they were thrilled to have. They are, they must be thrilled to have a grandchild. Uh, like you couldn't believe. No, I, they could, just, I couldn't believe. They came out for a week. Uh, from so my daughter is. Uh, I guess by the time this is now September, so we. Uh, my daughter's a couple of months old now. Yeah. Uh, but when she was at four weeks, they came out from four weeks to five weeks. So but they. This was good that you waited a little while. Yeah. 
So you have some time at home with the baby, the mom, the dad, the baby are at home. My girlfriend's mom was here from a week before she gave birth Mm. until a week after she gave birth. Mm -hmm. So that was awful. Then (laughs) we had a week off. Then her dad and his wife came out and they spent like week three to week four. Ooh, so that was awful. And then my parents came out from week four, but they was there was like one or I'm just kidding, baby. Uh, I love your parents. So then <laughs> they, there was a little overlap. So I figured that Did you they know, stay in your house. They, they stayed, stayed in the house. You. They stayed that's, in the that's house. Tough. I See, think that's yeah. tough. The I have with... a podcast room. I don't do my podcast from from sideshow. Yeah. I do out of a podcast room, which looks like this room mm-hmm. that we're sitting in mm-hmm. right now. Uh, but it's my it's in my own room and uh, and uh, and but. That has now that I haven't done a podcast since the baby. Yeah, because you go on the road. I mean, you go on remote anyway for podcasts. Sometimes you go to I will. Houses. I went to yeah. like Henry Winkler. I went to his house. Yeah. But like uh, uh, the fun. But Eric Stone Street came to my house. How wonderful! And then um, and you mentioned oranges and new black. I've had two oranges. That I've had ooh, J- ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, uh, Jason Biggs. Terrific. And and uh, Taryn Manning. Dude, that's yeah. fantastic. Yes. And now, um, so is your podcast room still a podcast room? No, or it's, is got it a, a room? it's got a baby room. It's got a no. Room now, there's a baby. Baby room. She's got her own room, and then I've got the room for the podcast. But we're having guests uh, stop by a lot lately, so <sighs> there's just a giant uh, four hundred dollar air mattress in the middle of the room. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I'm like, uh, can there really be a four hundred dollar air mattress? I, my parents are yes. in their seventies, yes, and my, she's got my mom's got all, all th- arthritis. So I was like, you know what? I don't want to have a regular mattress. This part is boring, but I yeah, there's a no, four hundred dollar mattress. No, because there's it. still just air in there. Right? It's air, but then there's a pillow top on. There's a whole. It's a whole. Thing. No, we yeah. just bought an air mattress when Did we you? went camping. Oh, yeah. But yeah. you can get the single or you can get the double. But yeah. then you can get the super deluxe double with the air mat. And it's like literally, and it's got a built in. Yeah. See, it's got a built in uh, uh, thing. Yeah. And you're like, this is better than the mattress I sleep on. I got the super deluxe queen with the t- pillow top, with the air, th- with the whole well, thing you're built in. Excellent into host. The pump inside. Yeah. I want to yeah. say. But at funny. the end of the day, you're still sleeping on a fucking air mattress. Yeah, yeah but yeah, it's you a made, very good host. You made me think of your, you know, it's like this is the problem with, see, your parents are together. Yes. So when they come, it's like they're there and then they're gone. Yeah. The problem with all these divorced people with their extended families, yeah, so your your wife's mother comes, uh-huh. then she leaves, then the dad comes yes. with a different woman. Yeah. It's like just yes. extending it Let's out it over going. time. It just makes yeah. it worse yeah. than just time. hating each other and yeah. living, you know, and screaming at each other every day. <laughs> yeah, well, it gives you somebody else to complain about, so hey, that's a good thing. Listen, this I have to bring this up, sure. and then we're going to play some shotgun story with oh, you. Okay. Um, your life has dramatically changed in the last couple of years. Uh-huh. You were on the Man School podcast yeah. with mm-hmm. Caleb Bacon, yes. and it was a hell of a show. Yes. You were very honest and very truthful about your one-year marriage mm-hmm. to a woman. It sounds like you, you know, you went to Paris on this vacation. You felt some pressure to kind of do the right thing. Yeah, I, and I, so I, can yeah. you fill in some of the gaps? I, um, uh, uh, sure. I met my ex-wife on J Date, <laughs> but she's Chinese. Go figure. Yeah, is that racist for no, a, a Chinese so. woman to go on J Date? No. No, that's anti-racist. She's I love Jews, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So exactly. we uh, we were together for years. Uh, we went to Paris. Years? You mean how many years? Ten, uh, five? We, oh, oh, yeah. Okay. Three. Uh, we were three. Three years. Three, that's a good yeah, amount three. of time. And so you know, I didn't want to be. With, I, I was happy. I was happy. Yeah. I wanted to be with her, but it was kind of like at that at that time. You know, we're both in our thirties. It's like, okay, so what are you going to do? So I propose. And am I going to be that uh, that guy yeah. that takes his girlfriend of multiple years to Paris and then not? I just fe- I felt like everybody was almost expecting me to do it. And she was sort of expecting. No, it. she she oh, she wasn't. Um, she was very surprised. I I knelt down uh, at the at uh, at Arc de Triomphe oh. and uh, I, oh, and I proposed and we videoed. I've had it a videotaped and so uh, there was that and uh, everything was great. Uh, and then uh, we got married a year later. That is yeah. very beautiful. She said, yes, that you did that. It was. I, mean, I wanted to give her a story worthy mm-hmm. of talking mm-hmm. about to other people and mm-hmm. uh, because for me I don't need to get married did I, uh, she want family and what mm-hmm. did, and, and she wanted that yes she but wanted th- family and then yeah. it doesn't work out it didn't work out I um uh, we got into we just started bickering about everything and then and then she and then it just ended you know like uh, uh she moved out and I didn't I didn't try to keep her there and I don't know, uh, you know, it, it was weird because I still loved her, uh, but I just, I was fine. I was just fine with her movie. I figured she'd come back. I figured we'd get well, back it's together. it's good that there wasn't any lying or cheating going on. Yeah. It didn't, there was nothing, you and know. It's a good thing you well, didn't have a kid yeah. where suddenly you have a nine-month-old. It's like, oh, by the way, this marriage is Sure. I'm, I mean, uh, 
uh, there was some lying, uh, no cheating, but I certain I, I wasn't being completely honest with her. You yeah, know? there's things about called li- there's yeah. things about called lies of omission yeah. where yeah. you you don't tell somebody things because you yeah. think you're doing them a favor. Right. I have a friend of mine who has a living girlfriend, and I know for a fact he cheats on her all the time. Yeah. And he doesn't tell her because he thinks he's doing her a favor. I know that's not what you did, but I always say to him, you know, you think you're doing her a favor if you're not, uh, your heart isn't into this, but you're not doing her a favor. Well, no, I, I don't know why anybody would, uh, if you're well, cheating all the time. people are afraid. They don't want, they don't want to let somebody down. Yeah. They're afraid of rejecting yeah, people somebody. People are always making bad decisions because bad what decisions. they think other people are going to think or be disappointed. But it's like, you, ha- you know, if you disappoint yourself... First, then yeah. you're going to disappoint other people. Well, not also, th- you're not as important to other people as you think yeah, you are. That's true. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. a very important thing, I think. People are like, oh, if I do this, it will crush another person. You're not really that important. Yeah, you don't have always the power. Says you're not that powerful, right? Yeah, you don't have that power. But here's the thing, Nuzzy. Then, yep. you, then you do get a girlfriend, and in fact, now you have a child. I met my girlfriend on my podcast mm-hmm. before I got married. Mm-hmm. She was actually a guest on Decently Funny. And, before you uh, got married. Before I got married. I was okay. engaged. And so... Um, we were friends, um, and, uh, and no, no, nothing crazy. Uh, but you know, there'd be the occasional text, the occasional meetup, but we were literally just, we were only friends and it wasn't uh, anything. And then, uh, my ex wife, my now ex wife moves out Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. And so then we kind of, we kind of started up after, uh, after about six months of me laying in the fetal position, wondering what did I do? And you love each other? Well, yeah, we have. And you're going to get married? Do you uh, think? Or, or, I, or look, how do you, yeah, how does that work? There you go. I, I, putting um, expectations. No, I don't know. I We haven't talked about it, but uh, I think marriage isn't important to me. Mm-hmm. If I never got married again, it's it's not that's it's not for me. Mm-hmm. But uh, my last name is my daughter's last name, mm-hmm. and my girlfriend's last name is her own. Like, they don't... Yeah. So we don't have... I think... For, I, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not looking for anybody else. So I think um, and this is very not romantic way of of uh, of, of getting married. But um, I think if we do, it would be, and when we do, it mm-hmm. would be. Uh, yeah. Please cut out the if part. No. But when <laughs> when we do, it will be because I think it's kind of selfish of me to kind of have mother and daughter have separate last names. I think well, no, wait a second. I put my daughter's, her middle name is Blackburn, and then her last name is her dad's last name. Well, that's, so we kept yeah. Blackburn's in there. Yeah. Believe me, she wasn't getting out of this womb without the last name, with Blackburn yeah. being in there somewhere. So you can always, you know, it's not hyphenated, but it's just her middle she name. She chose the first and middle names, I, uh, and I kept the last one. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. Right. And, and what's she's your daughter's name? She's going to make it into Luc- Black Doe's at yeah. some point. Her name is Lucille Nussbaum. Hee <laughs> hee. My daughter... Is uh, is she uh, right from the womb, right into a nursing home? Lucille Nussbaum. <laughs> she sounds like everybody's Aww. Jewish grandmother. <laughs> well, then, no, I like it when you bring back the old names. Like, who is it that uh, t- uh, famous comedian? Her daughter's name is Mabel. Yeah. There's these these names that have gone, and then I come love back. It. Pearl, Tina, Fey, yeah. Tina Fey's Mabel. daughter is Mabel, I believe. We call is that, yeah is Tina Fey's one? daughter. We call okay. Lucille. We call her Lucy, and we thought it was very like uh, like a new kind of old name. But then uh, it's a great name. Yeah, except right now one of the biggest movies of the summer is a fucking movie called Lucy. So everybody's kid is going to be named Lucy. No, uh, because it's a horror film. Oh, is it? Uh, I Lucy, haven't seen yeah, it. Yeah, it's no. a Char- uh, Scarlett Johansson. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but she's like not horror, but she it's like sci-fi. I mean, she's got. Yeah. I don't. I didn't see it, but no, she I has powers. And stuff. Yeah, yeah but people but are going to think that. Yeah, you don't want people to think that. Oh, well, well as, I, as, as a pass. guy named Hannes, I always say this: good for you naming your child Lucy. It's good. Lucy's you don't want to come up with some name. foreign name that, no. like, even in Germany, uh, it's not. It's a really abstract, uh, old version yeah. of the name Johannes. So it's like no, but there's nobody else in the United States named Hannes. Also, I have it's a irritating. second grader, and I don't know anybody with the name Lucy. Now you know any kids. So I was. Neat. I'm David. So literally, David, you know, my mom would scream down the block or anybody, David, and then 13 <laughs> Jews would all like pop up their head like Groundhog Day. Like they'd all like, yes, yes, you're like all named David. Now and the, so the, the, the I wanted tradition something. of naming after, naming babies after other relatives yeah. who have passed, does yes. that go for girls as well sure. as boys? Yeah. It does. Okay. Sure it does. That's why often Esther and... Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't. Uh, I don't know why other names are not Esther. Great. Esther Rachel, is good, yes. things like that. Can, <laughs> those names continue to go on mm-hmm. in the Jewish community, whereas they don't wait, fall by the wayside because you're yeah. supposed to name your kid you after a passed Lucy's? away relative. No, uh, Charlotte, my girlfriend, she's uh, she's a huge fan of Lucille Ball. She oh, has great. a tattoo that sure. says "I love Lucy." Oh my god! 
gosh. And she was just me. trying she's, to save money. That is so terrific. She's, <laughs> she's had I it for that. 10 years. And, and so, Are uh, you serious? Well, that is like meant to be. Her parents, although they get along really well right now, I don't know how much they paid attention to her when she was growing up. So she, she sat for many years in front of the television TV. set, and uh, it was Lucille Ball that raised her. And so, um, yeah, we named our child after a, a celebrity that neither one of us have ever she met. She is going to be a great mom, Charlotte. She, she already gonna is. going to be a great mom. She already is. I, yeah. I bet she is, because yeah. See, when you don't, like I know my mom is a great mom, don't get mm-hmm. me wrong, but I'm the youngest of six, and so I had to be on fire to get attention. Uh, and so therefore, I have turned around, and I'm like, I love being a hands-on mom. You well, know, with my good. Baby. Yeah, yeah. Charlotte, well, good she, for me. She, yeah, <laughs> no, good. Fuck. No, good for you. <laughs> no, That's but I, very I love important. it. It it is so important, and especially I'm only going to have the one. And um, I also find where I live, like in Silver Lake, a lot of the parents are older in their late 30s or 40s, and right. people we hold our babies in very, very high regard out here. At least where I live, mm-hmm. and probably where you guys are too. Yeah. yeah. Children are so crazy precious out here. Yeah, they might get. See, the opposite of being ignored is being. Uh, what is that? The helicopter parent. Yeah. Who said, which you don't do. You know, but no, because, I don't do uh, that. because I don't Alabama do that. won't let you. No, she won't. She no, won't let you, smart. which is good. She's too smart, though. She's like, smart, man. I got things to do. Yeah, Back she's busy. Mom. Yeah, I've got to sit. My sister, she's the helicopter. She's a yeah. she's a hoverer. That can be and, too much. Yeah. My daughter said the other day, Mama, you need <laughs> hair combing lessons. <laughs> uh, I said, well, you I need just, an attitude I adjustment. Know, I just saw Louis Black's new special, and he was talking about how you didn't have play dates when he was a kid. Yeah. <laughs> His mother was like, what do I got? I got a fucking resume from a nine-year-old? <laughs> uh, uh, Go out in the street and play. And the kid with the runny eye, play with him, too, and come back for dinner at 5 o'clock. You know, Alabama just said to me, Mama, we don't call it play dates anymore. She said, I, she said I'm going to have Gwendolyn, Gwendolyn over for a get-together. I said, you mean a play date? She said, no, Mama, now it's a get-together. I said, of course it is. You're seven. It'll be a dinner party at some point. Yeah. So, hey, you want to play some Shotgun Story Worthy? I mean, it's part of the show, right? Yeah. can only mean one thing. It's time for Shotgun Story Worthy. The game where our storyteller spins the story worthy wheel of truth and tells a true one minute story about the topic it lands on. So everybody, say it with me. Spin that wheel! Vacation, vacation, vacation. Where did I go on vacation? This is my vacation story. Uh, so I, uh, I went to Mexico. And Mexico is our neighbor to the south. <laughs> All right. And uh, yes, so when I got off, the, when my girlfriend and I, we got off the plane because we planned this entire trip to Mexico. And we got off the plane and in uh, like 37 guys all tried uh, to steal money from us uh, because they all, but they used it as, um, they said timeshare, timeshare. And, and they, I couldn't get to my, to the cab. Uh, I love Mexico, by the way, but I'm just saying this part because it was very annoying. So that's why if I don't ever go back to Mexico, it's because when I get off the plane, uh, every uh, person in the airport is trying to get me to buy a timeshare. Yeah. But anyway, so I finally get to the time, uh, to our timeshare that we, we <laughs> 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 and, um, but it was, we had a lovely time and we got uh, spa treatments and uh, my girlfriend ha- got a urinary tract infection. So, and that's, <laughs> and we're at the minute. So boy, I got to tell you, what a great story that One was. One minute, oh, 26 yeah. seconds. I told you the crotch would come in somewhere now, in wait this a story. Minute. Yeah. <laughs> wait a minute. Um, <laughs> did you have to sit through one of those meetings? No, I just I I kept saying, well, what are they going to do about it? Kick me out? I don't right? know. I don't yeah. know how did it work. Oh, what you mean you, were, you refused to go no. to the meeting? I no, I it was a timeshare uh, area, but I paid the I paid to just I didn't know. I apparently every hotel or or uh, what do they call them resorts? Every resort in uh, in Mexico that I can afford <laughs> yeah. uh, is a timeshare uh, resort. So right. while you're there, all they're trying to do yeah. is get you That sounds to, like a yeah. nightmare. It was, because it makes really me not want to... That would really piss me off. Yeah, yeah it would really piss me, me off. Back. It's like, so if I... And, and if somehow I caved in and bought a timeshare, yeah. then you guys would be twice as vapid. Is that the word? Yeah, you guys sure. would be twice as crazy mm-hmm. yeah. because somebody's obviously giving in to you. So you can't right. give in. No, then, yeah, as soon as you bought one level, they'd you're be done. after you for level but two. How many and then times? you're a Scientologist. But then I'm not going to... No, like there's then you're so selling many, Amway. There's so many places in the world to go on vacation. So if I'm going to go on vacation, well, I'm going to keep coming back to the same hotel well, I think every the single year. Never sometimes, forget how stupid people are. Yeah. But also sometimes it'll give me like a Hilton timeshare so you can use it in different Hiltons around the world. Right. I don't know, man. This particular I don't place was 
just for that one. I like to be right here in Los Angeles. I don't even like to travel, I'll be honest with you. Now, I'm trying to say, I've been to Mexico twice, although it was years ago. I never got bothered in the airport. Yeah. Actually, none of the bad things that, well, now I wouldn't go because I'd be afraid of being kidnapped. And they'd look at me. Johannes, you really do look kidnap worthy. No, no, no. I look like a guy who probably has a house and money. I don't. But I look like a guy who's like a middle manager of some company sure. yeah. somewhere, and I've got my shorts and my Hawaiian shirt, and it's like, I'm on vacation, and somebody will pay for me. I'm like, nope, nobody's <laughs> paying to get if me back. If they call me, Hannes, I'm going to say, you know, put it on my like, bill. You'll be like, have you listened to Storyworthy? It's about, we are trying, we will kill him. Well, I, I, yeah, but <laughs> first, can you download uh, 10 Storyworthies? Because that'll help my numbers. Uh, I, I probably went to more of a um, vacationy kind of area where they would almost ex- they they see me a mile away coming off the yeah. off the thing. But um, I don't. I just wanted to everything. I, I had I had everything set in advance. I had the car waiting for yeah. me. I, and then we just want to yeah. do this. Just I just want to get the agenda. To, yes, Can leave we do me this, alone. please? Right. If alone. you're paying money, you don't yeah. want to be bothered. Is it true that you have a Janice Dickinson obsession? No. Okay. I do. I, I know some, her. Does somebody on the show, if your show really, because I seem to, li- when I listen to your show, yeah. I seem to hear about Janice Dickinson from time to time. I uh, Well, I know her. I was I produced a, the, a Janice Dickinson show. I, mm-hmm. I produced a number of shows, uh, television shows. So there is, there is a connection. I have a connection. I've, Janice has been on my podcast. We're friendly. And uh, she is a pain in the ass oh, uh, at to producing Janice's show. She's She has a, um, you know, she's very... Uh, exacting. A, a very, she's an alpha female, mm-hmm. and so she wants A-type. things the way she like. Uh, my lighting has to be like this, and the microphones yeah. have to be like. Th- and I'm yeah, like, you I know, could just, see that yeah. though. In other words, uh, you know, you have a history on TV. You kind of know how it's done. Yeah. And you, I, I remember hearing about from Barbara Walters once, and uh, she was doing an interview with somebody. And after she did like the second take, they said, "Okay, can we go again?" And she said, "No, you have it." Yeah. Because she's mm. editing way in advance, yeah. and she knows. And I feel like, yeah, she fucking does know. Sure. Yeah. So there's and, part of that. Yeah, I, I like a story like that because she's making it less work for everyone. Yeah, because she's, she's such to a say, pro. You guys, yeah, we don't to need who to who have like, ten takes. Yeah. Take ten. Yeah. Well, famously, yeah. like, yeah, I, I, Clint Eastwood. <laughs> Maybe you need like, another take. We do on need that another one. take yeah. actually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. The, uh, yeah, famously, Clint Eastwood was like that. Like we've had Dan Sachoff on, who was in in uh, uh, J. Edgar Hoover, and other people who have oh. worked with Clint Eastwood. And they'll be like, they'll do a take. Okay, do it again. Okay, we got it. And he's just he's already yeah. walking away. Clint he's walking away on. from the set. Yeah, he s- says so cool. He cut. He's walking away. You should it's get like uh, you should get Kirk Fox. Have, has Kirk ever been on your no, show? No, I'd love to have. He him. he was married to Allison Eastwood. He was married wow. to Kirk uh, to oh, uh, really? uh, Clint's, uh, Clint's, daughter. Clint's daughter. Interesting. And he li- he told he, on my podcast. Kirk he, Fox. Kirk Fox. He he admitted that he only got married. Maybe I'm getting it. I'm rephrasing it, paraphrasing. He married her just so he can say, uh, "My father-in-law is Clint." Eastwood. <laughs> I could see that. Yeah. No, I, I'm sure you know, Allison Eastwood sort of, is very it's slightly amazing. valid. Yeah. I mean, I kind of yeah. hear that. You know, and then and then uh, and then Clint did that whole thing with the President Obama and the empty chair, oh, and then was, everybody yeah, thought he was the a big chair thing. Attack. Yeah, that was kind of yeah. crazy. Hey, yeah, uh, he's do you just have any, old though. Do you have any dream guests you'd like to have on Decently Funny? Uh, I just asked Guy the other day that maybe we should get away from celebrities and maybe do more. Um, like I said, you know, like a prostitute would be kind of fun. Mm. Like I'd like to learn like w- about a prostitute's brain. Well, a lot of other shows do do that. Like, oh, is that uh, right? Well, yeah, a lot of podcasts do that sort of oh. thing. Like Paul Gilmartin, he has oh. on uh, people that are destitute in one way or oh. another. A um, couple of shows yeah. do that. Yeah, but and you it's, can't get it's, enough destitute. It's slightly entertaining, but only for about three to five oh, minutes because they're yeah. not entertainers. Right. And I find like when you have a celebrity or somebody on the show who slightly knows how to make it entertaining. Yes. But if it's just a sad person. No, but for me, it would be a test to see, are people tuning in to listen to me? Or are people only <laughs> tuning in because of my guest? Usually, it's because of the guest. I mean, yeah, no, you're no, facilitating. No, and that's but right. It is the guest. And it, to me, it, it would make me a better interviewer because uh, it's easy to interview Alex Sulkin or or uh, or Danny Zucker, both amazing, yeah. you know, writers. Danny Zucker, and, man, what I love to have. Zucker's on the show. been on. He's been on my podcast. I know like he so has. Many, and it's easy because I don't have to do shit. Right. I literally just th- you know d- do the bag uh, with the, with the with the uh, topics know, in it, right. and then they could just talk, and they every word is funny. Um, well, you're an easy guest for us. Uh, uh, well, I c- thank you. I'm I mean, the shitting on the toilet in the jail, that except, was gold. Yeah, except you. for the heroin we had to provide before the show, you're incredibly easy. So listen, really, you're very talented. Uh, we do got to wrap it up. What would be, though, um, 
Nazi, what would be your, your, your dream job? What's the dream job? I have my dream job right now. Father. Uh, uh, no. I mean, that's great. Father's dream job. My, um, I, I currently work with uh, hologram stuff. Oh, that's right. And I knew that. I'm really into it because it's so brand new. So everybody saw Tupac at Coachella, and then most recently Michael Jackson was brought back to life, and he performed at the Billboard Awards. My company... You reincarnate we, we, departed we, we, icons. Yes, we digitally resurrect icons, and I'm talking to th- the biggest names that have ever walked on the earth to bring them back and to give them full 90-minute <coughs> Vegas shows. Let's sell some tickets. Let's make some money. And, uh, and, and let's, who gets paid? Does an estate get paid? Sure, the estate. estate. Would, yeah, so let's just say, for argument's sake, I talk to uh, Richard Pryor's, mm-hmm. Rain Pryor or whoever the yeah, estate his is. Daughter. I say to um, I say to Richard Pryor's estate or family, I say, um, I'd like to, with f- complete sophistication, it will look like Richard Pryor is standing on that stage, right. uh, and we'll use um, we'll recreate him completely to the very last hair on his face, and we can sink in old material or maybe some stuff that d- you know whatever, and so uh, so he, they will receive uh, every time he st- opens his mouth a portion of all revenue goes to the estate of Richard Do they Pryor. get any kind of final approval? Absolutely. As- final wow. approval. Wow. Yeah. They, That's com- terrific. They, we want them in the process. So uh, we are talking What's to... What's the computer program you're talking about? It's uh, it's just like movies. Incarnation.com? No, it's just like movies. CGI. So we would take... We would CGI. use old... Okay. Have you seen Jurassic Park? Yeah. It's like that. <laughs> it would, it's, like, it's like that. It's no, like it. uh, Avatar. It's like that. So um, we could uh, bring anybody back... And we can wait, put wait. them onto a stage. Okay, you don't need video footage of no, them. No, nothing need about images vi- of them. Only for reference. Oh wait, so the image. Okay, the hologram that you are projecting. Yes. Is not a hologram version of a video. Mm-hmm. It's a completely original. Did visual you see Michael Jackson creation. on the Billboard? Where I, I saw didn't that. See that. One. I saw the Tupac one because, of course, I'm a big Tupac fan. Tucock, whatever the fuck his name is. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, he, he lives uh, on an uh, island with Elvis somewhere. But um, yeah, okay. So it's I didn't realize that. So it's not. It's a completely original video yep. version of this person. Uh, that's three right. It's dimensional, completely. Where can we so go online? To so see you need to have like sound this. to link the video to. You say what? You need to have sound to like. You yeah. Say you could do John Wayne, but then you would need audio of John Wayne. Wait, did he die? Many, many Sorry. years or ago. Or we <laughs> can uh, find a great John Wayne voice guy. We live in Hollywood, right? right. So uh, if audio doesn't exist, we, can, um, we could put in audio where uh, it does not exist to kind of make it a whole thing. But uh, yeah, hologramusa.com. Hologramusa.com. And it's, it's literally, I'm gonna go look we at own that. The, the ability to project uh, images onto a stage. So instead of going to a movie theater, you can now go to a stage. You could go to a. Uh, you could a, bring a, a Vegas act back. We are so literally in this yes. room. Yes, you could have a hologram of Michael Jackson. I could. Yeah, and I invite both of you. My studio is on Cannon Drive in Beverly Hills. Yeah, yeah. it's called Hologram USA. Uh, I invite you two and uh, uh, to come, and I will show you a demonstration. Thank I will show you, you the, so much. the whole. I'd love to do that. Yeah, it's a performance and. That, you're yeah. gonna freak out when you see uh, when you see uh, Frank Sinatra walk out onto the stage. You're gonna be like, "Oh my God, fuck Get Frank Sinatra!" See, I never yeah. saw Frank. Yeah, yeah, because I wanted to see Frank Sinatra, and I was just so stupid about Frank Sinatra right up until he was almost dead. And I'm yeah. like, "Oh my God, how have I yeah. not realized what a great artist he is?" And then he died. You but know ha- where I saw Frank Sinatra on the Jersey Shore in Atlantic hey. City? It was Frank Sinatra, Sammy Davis Jr. It was that whole Dean Martin. It was the whole. The you whole saw that show? Yeah, man. How it was, do it was I like a reunion that? thing. This yeah, was in, no, I I'm remember. I'm going to go with the year... This is 90, late 80s? 91, 90. Long yeah. time ago. Yeah. Long time ago. Yeah. God. Look at that. How about that? So that's... I kind of am doing something a lot of... like. Just, it's just so fun because nobody else it's can do it. It's the future. No, it's like the next I thing. I think so. It's I can. Fantastic. I don't need to go to the movies to watch a movie. I've got the big flat screen on the wall, and yeah. then uh, you know, if I'm if I'm lucky enough to know somebody with Oscar screeners, I li- I literally never have to leave the house. But <sighs> now I saw this movie with Bruce Willis, and there were robots, and yeah. they put your soul in the robot. Yeah. Lucy yeah. is very lucky because now you're going to be around. <laughs> That's right. That's and hopefully, true. She, hopefully, I can afford to send her off to a nice. Uh, uh, oh, you know, big, right. you can make big a hologram of yourself, and then she'll have the <laughs> illusion that you're a parent. She's who comes gonna be working on the Jersey day. Shore at yeah. Mac and Menko Pizza. Yeah, 
All right, you guys, we get to wrap this Just up right about now. Pizza. Thank you. I appreciate, thank you for having thank me on. Thank you so much. That was really, what a thank delight. You. That was fun. I'd like to thank everybody here at Sideshow Network, including Scott <laughs> Christopher over there, our sound guy, and also Sean Merrick, and of course, Darren McAvee. And on behalf of John Thomas Griffith, you know, he's John the guy, Thomas. Hannes, he wrote our theme song, Follow Me. Did he? Yes. I, I, I've met him, but I thought I had, but perhaps he was just a hologram. Maybe he so was. So I'm not sure if I've met him or not. My, my theme song was uh, was performed by Panic at the Disco live from my living room. No big deal. <laughs> and on behalf of our storyteller tonight, David Nuzzy Nuzbomb, thank you so much for coming. Mm-hmm. And of course, on behalf of you, Hannes Finney, my dear friend and co-host, my name is Christine Blackburn. I'm not here. Saying, make it a story worthy week. Thanks for joining us on the Story Worthy Podcast. We'll be back next week with all new stories. Subscribe to Story Worthy on iTunes and visit the Story Worthy website at storyworthypodcast.com. Follow me. Follow me.